Trust is everything. One of the first things you shared with me is how you have to really, really learn how to be fully honest with yourself. Honesty is so important. And would you really want someone who doesn't want you for who you are? One of the best ways to embody empathy is to hold space. Being willing to move through that together. When you have five pillars like this. What is the point of a pillar? It's meant to lift up and hold steady. There's nothing that makes me happier than talking about our relationship because it just makes me glow. And to be able to take that and share tips that we have with individuals who are seeking just little bits of advice, it's just fun, number one. But it also helps us really take a step back and ask ourselves what does help us go deeper into our relationship. And when we started thinking about what to talk about when we got all of these requests of tell us what makes your relationship tick, one of the things we thought about was trust and building out the trust especially when our relationship didn't start out with the most trust and full transparency, and it needed to be built from that. And so we want to talk about tips for getting to a place of trust, which is truly the building blocks of having a solid relationship. If we don't trust each other, then where do we go from there, right? And again, that doesn't matter whether it's a business relationship, a friendship, family relationship, or being in this deep, connected, romantic partnership we're in. Trust is everything. So how do you rebuild trust if trust has ever been broken? Right. That's a great point. I mean, a lot of a lot of times when we go into relationships, it's, I know I've been here, it's jaded by previous ones, yes. right? Um, and even then when it's, let's say it's your first relationship, well, to a degree is jaded by what the perception of what relationships are. And so it's really, that makes it difficult because it's never what it is. Yes. <laughs> There's an idea, but oftentimes, and that's kind of one of the things we talked about in one of our previous ones about disappointment and expectations and all that. But today we're really going to focus on these five pillars of what it takes to build a trusting relationship, right? And so when I think trust, one of the first things that comes forward is honesty, right? And that's, that's, a, that's a key one. Yes. That's an absolute, absolute key one. And one that, um, you know, to, to what you're kind of talking about here is, is where we struggle in the beginning. Um, we meaning I, but <laughs> um, but but it was a, it's still a we because it's a relationship, right? Exactly. And so uh, when I met you, uh, you immediately were like the most honest person I've ever met in my life, and and it wasn't like you know there's a brutally honest, and then there's like a just a sincere, authentic honesty, and that was you were really the first person that I ever seen embody that type of sincere honesty. And I loved it. I wanted to emulate that, but I didn't know how. I was really stuck in this old way of like, okay, you know, white lies are okay because you know you want to project what you'd like your life to be, right? Right. And so the intention behind it was good, but I was so busy seeking to project what it is instead of actually doing it. And that was my misunderstanding. That was my big. Uh, fault in terms of honesty. And it started because I wasn't fully honest with myself. I hadn't taken the time to understand if like, okay, what I see on television and movies and what I see others uh, in their perspectives of like what I look at of good relationships. I was like, oh, you know, these are things to emulate. And so, okay, how do I become that? And so I was so busy on so busy and caught in this flow of like how I would look like I'm emulating it versus actually doing it uh, because I didn't know how, mainly because I didn't know how to be fully honest with myself first. 
And so that was a key one. I, I was not only sharing kind of white lies, one, because I, I didn't think it was a big deal, not realizing the uh, massive snowball effect that it actually has, but I was doing that to myself. And so you know, it was one of the first things you shared with me is like how you, you have to really, really learn how to be fully honest with yourself. And that was, that was a trying time for me, if you will. It was very troubling. It was shattering. Um, I didn't, I was afraid to look at myself and re recognize all the things that, you know, I viewed myself as this person, but I realized that I wasn't living up to that person. And I was so afraid that others, you know, could see that, but I was even more afraid that I could see it. And so I had to break through that. And that was the hard, that was really, really difficult. Um, eye-opening and heartbreaking yeah and i remember navigating with you through that yeah. where one of your your fears as we really dove into it was that i would leave mm -hmm. because everyone left mm -hmm. and if you drove me away first then you were directing it. Mm -hmm. At least then you could brace yourself and you could be ready instead of it happening because I chose it and you were out of control. Mm -hmm. If you built up all of these little lies and you chipped away and you drove me away, then it was on your terms. Mm -hmm. But I, I love you. And I love you, not the persona you have created. And it took creating that trust from you in me that I honestly loved you. No matter what persona you had created, because I knew that was a mask. And once that mask came off, I would still be there with you. And I would help you get to the persona you had created if that's truly who you desired to be. But it was clear that wasn't who you were in that moment, no matter how much you pretended it was. Yeah. But I couldn't be there with you if you didn't stop pretending yourself. So a huge part of our disconnect was that you were lying to yourself and to me, even though they seemed to be little white lies. They were creating this huge distance between us because I couldn't be with you where you were because you sh wouldn't show me who you were, really and truly, even though I could see who you were, yeah. really and truly. And that's who I was falling in love with. It's hard to build a relationship when you can't get close to the person you truly love because they're creating all of these masks and all of these things that they think you want them to be instead of actually learning who you are and who you desire, right? Yeah. And so honesty is so important. Mm -hmm. And would you really want someone who doesn't want you for who you are? Mm. Because you cannot pretend to be somebody different long term. No. No, you're so right. I mean, that's it. And that was the hardest part I was finding is like, I, you know, I was being something, someone different to everyone. And then, you know, with you, it's like, you know, I could get away with it because in the past, you know, I would, I would kind of cut things off before they got serious. And so I never really, um, no one, I never had a relationship long enough to really, you know, I didn't have to worry about consistency, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's, and, you, know, you know, looking back, obviously I have, a, I wish I knew better. I really do. I wish I, you know, my intention was never to nefariously deceive people or it, it was, I just, it was my own insecurities that I just, I wanted to be seen in, in the, in a specific way. And I 
it was my insecurities that I couldn't actually be that. I was so afraid that I couldn't be that. I was so afraid to fail of being the person that I wanted to be. And, uh, and then that, that caused a lot of rifts, um, you know, in different relationships and things. And when it came to you, I'm just grateful that you were the first person that really, really saw through that. Uh, I believe there was a lot of hints to me before then. Um, and people were very nice to share and let me know like, Hey, you're not, you're not letting me in. Mm -hmm. Um, but I wasn't ready because I wasn't letting myself in yet. And so, yeah, that's where honesty and transparency is so key in this, um, because you can't, you can't give what you don't already have. And so I couldn't give full honesty. I couldn't give full transparency because I wasn't that to myself yet. And so going through that process, I actually had to even build trust within myself. I mean, no wonder I was feeling anxiety and stress and sadness and like I couldn't accomplish. I had a low self-worth, low self-esteem, low self-confidence. Even though I had this projection of something different, it was because I didn't trust myself to actually do it. And so, yeah, I couldn't have a deep relationship with myself. I couldn't build trust with myself because I didn't have an honest connection with who I am. Yeah. And the same is true from my side, right? Even when I began to feel afraid of this connection that we had, which occurred, right? It doesn't, it's not as though you were the only one who was like, whoa, wait a second, what is happening here? I had the same response, but I had to be honest with myself and say, yes, this is real. This is deep. This is true. And I had to be willing to be honest with you in those moments mm -hmm. where I was feeling overwhelmed by what was occurring between us mm -hmm. and say to you, this is a lot. And I need to take a little step back to understand what is happening for me in this connection with you. And that gave you the freedom to do the same thing at times and say, wait a second, now I'm at the stage of feeling a little overwhelmed by what is happening between us. And for both of us to never take that and feel like that means I don't love you. It simply means that I need to get my feet under me so that I don't turn around and run from you. In a lot of relationships, especially in my past, I would do that where the moment I started to feel overwhelmed in a relationship, I would pull away from the relationship. And I did not desire to do that in our connection. So the moment I would begin to feel that, I would then be honest and transparent with you and say, this is where I'm at. I may need a day or two to rebalance myself so that I don't pull away or do things that I would do in the past. And I could look at myself in that way and be honest with myself mm. to understand why. And that made us even stronger. And if someone could do that in a relationship and give ourselves that space, then we can start to break patterns even for what we do in a relationship, right? That personal honesty and responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I think it's key. And that goes into the next pillar, which is consistency, right? Mm -hmm. Being consistent in so many areas, including that personal responsibility of being part of a relationship. We have personal responsibility. It is not all your job to make me happy in the relationship. Right. Vice versa. I mean, it, that's so true. It, we, and it, and it's, it's important for us to flow with that consistency together and choose, like as we were talking about in the last episode, collaboration, right? Collaboration is an expression of love. And through that love, that can create that safe space for us to grow. And so consistency is, is how we maintain, right? And so we can have habits that are unhealthy and we can be consistent in those. And that doesn't mean it's actually beneficial. Yes. 
And so what we needed to do was through our honesty and transparency within ourselves, flow that into what, con what consistent habits and, and, and in what collaboration do we desire to be consistent with each other that actually lifts each other up. You know, honesty is a key one because lying, consistently lying is not going to help grow a relationship, but consistent honesty absolutely is, mm -hmm. right? Consistent self-growth. Mm -hmm. So we know that we both are striving to be the best versions of ourselves, but through that become stronger together. Mm -hmm. And that is our desire as a couple, to always be our best individual selves and then come together to be the best unit mm -hmm. or we say unity, mm -hmm. the best unity that we can be through that personal growth. Then we take that out into our community and create a stronger community mm -hmm. through our own unity. But we have to be personally responsible for our own self in that connection. So that's consistency. And if one of us isn't doing that, we're willing to say, hey, what have you done recently that is fostering your internal personal forward movement? And if it isn't anything, maybe it, there's a reason for that. And we can talk through it because we're not going to have time all the time to be like, go self growth. <laughs> yeah. We're busy and we get that. But then we can look at, okay, how are we growing even in that? Yeah. There's always something. Yeah. Right? And that's where we put in space for us to love each other where we are. Yes. And that's what's so key. So it's a c consistent across the board is that the love is being shown, shared, respected, honored, and fulfilled. But whether we are in a space of moving forward, we're assisting each other through that. We're being consistent in the love that we share to help each other grow and be the best version. But having it's it's just not possible to sustain this constant, constant growth, right? Yeah. So we need these moments of 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 pausing, of uh, you know, we we always talk about it kind of like like a, an arrow, right? A bow and arrow. Like you pull back, you pull back, and right before you're about to let go, there's that moment of a pause, and then you can kind of shoot forward. Well, that's kind of what growth is in many ways, right? So sometimes we have to pull back to get the full picture and get like the extent of the expansion of how we want to move forward. But there's that pause, right? Yes. And then, and then we can shoot ourselves forward, but then we pick up the next bow, right? And we got to pull back and pause before we go again. And so in those spaces, it's not like, you know, either of us is, are saying, Hey, you're not growing. So either grow more or, you know, get you're out. gone or yeah. get on. It's like, no, that's, that's not loving. We, we have, we need time to integrate and, and flow into this new space that we're at. Uh, and because it's in collaboration, it's never one sided, yeah. you know, we can, we know where we're at. We're communicating that effectively. We're building trust in that new space. And maybe I or you might show up in a different way, but that different is not a, a bad way or an inconsistent way. It's a new way that we know is in the intention of the betterment of not only ourselves, but our relationship as a whole. Well, that's a great building block right there. Exactly. So we know consistently our desire is to better our relationship. And sometimes that means just pausing and being happy where yeah, we are. Exactly. But there's always that consistency factor. And it's a communicated consistency so that we know where we are, yeah. right? Which is a huge part of it for me personally. And I think is very beneficial because then I have that sense of safety, mm -hmm. which to me is important. If I don't feel safe in our connection, then I don't feel like I can grow in our connection. Mm -hmm. Same. Oh. All right. What's our next pillar? Empathy. And so that flows beautifully into the consistency is, uh, and the honesty is, is holding space, right? The, one of the best ways to, to embody empathy is to hold space. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it allows us to let the other person know that they're being seen, heard, and gotten. And we're going to say that a lot because it's so very important. And when you break it down, that's really what a vast, I'd like to say everyone, but I'm going to say a vast majority of everyone <laughs> um, would like uh, because ultimately, I mean, that that is when we are seen, heard, and gotten, it does it does help a lot. And I want to give a shout out to Dr. Rosie Kuhn yes. because she is the one who brought forward the whole flow of seen, heard, and gotten yes. that we use a lot. She's an amazing member of our Suivera team, and we're just grateful for her. But that's something you'll hear mm -hmm. her say all the time, and now it's kind of ended up in our in our language. So, yes. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's where being able to to breathe in that empathy into into holding space. And allowing that growth to occur, whether that, because growth can be a movement forward, as we were talking about, but growth in in sustaining, like like staying put and integrating, uh, that is in many ways that still is growth, right? Because it's saying, okay, now that I have this understand, this new awareness and this new understanding, I need to understand how to actually maintain this, so this isn't just a a, a one and done or a burnout, right? Yeah. Um, because we can move so forward and we can get so excited about personal growth and then burn out and be like, oh, and then we go way back. And we take, you know, instead of taking two steps forward, you know, we're taking two steps backwards and then that's not going to help anyone. So we need that space to, to, to just, you know, to be able to hold space, not only for our partner, but also for ourselves and that it's okay to be in a paused state that integrating that is still action in many ways. And empathy across the board is important because if I don't feel like you can feel where I am, which is a little different, sometimes it does just boil down to sympathy. Like I might not understand where you are or have gone through it, but I can at least hold space for it. So sympathy and empathy, I think, can be somewhat interchangeable in this one but always to at least be willing to connect with your partner mm -hmm. or the person that you are in whatever type of relationship with and say, even if I can't have a personal connection with that and I don't exactly have an awareness of it, I can at least sympathize with where you are and say, I don't know where you are because I've never been there, but I am sure that must be hard. And I am certain that you must be going through something that is keeping you in the feeling that you're in. So let me be here with you, even if I can't 100% understand where you are, mm -hmm. because that's the unconditional love I have for you. Yeah. And what a beautiful space of trust. I mean, you can, because in those moments that we aren't feeling 100% or we feel like, Maybe we feel like we're lost or we're a part, like as we're expanding our awareness, we're recognizing a version of ourselves that maybe we don't like. Mm -hmm. I've been there. And it's like, whoa, um, you know, I could feel insecure. I could then start to feel like, well, oh my gosh, I know this about me. Does she know this about me? And, you know, is, if she doesn't, like, is she going to leave me? Or, you know, there's all these things that we can think about that flow in that way. And that was one of the best things that you provided uh, and continue to provide in our relationship is a sense of, is this empathy because I feel like I trust you through that. And because of that, that is, that is trust in action that I feel like I can be vulnerable, that I can share where I'm at. I can share my insecurities. I can be human and, you know, not recognize like, Hey, I'm not perfect. And I'm, I'm going through these things. And when you are there to listen and to love, through that process, then I feel like I come, I become stronger on the other side. And that's a huge thing that I'm not just getting over it or suppressing it. Like I'm actually moving through it. And therefore at the end of it, I can show up and be even at a greater capacity in our relationship and to you than I ever have been before. Yeah. So what a beautiful thing and vice versa, right? I love that. Yeah. And one thing I will say, because I hear this often when I have helped couples in different coaching or therapy sessions, they come at it from a standpoint of, 
while I am pushing my partner to get through this. If I just sit and allow them to wallow in this, yes, it happened. It's awful, but you need to get over it. And I don't want to just sit and hold space for my partner to sit and wallow in the feeling. I understand that. But there's enough in the world that is pushing your partner to get through things or to get over things or to just not feel their feels. The world is hard enough. As their partner, they lean on you to be their safety, to be their harbor where they can go through and experience their feels and not be judged for them, not be told to hurry up and get through it faster than they are getting through it. So while it's a noble thing, because that's where you're coming at it from, it is about what your partner needs at the speed they need it. And often I would recommend to hold that space of empathy for your partner as long as they need it, because the world's hard enough. What they truly need, likely, is your unconditional love and the safety of that empathy so that they can get through it at the pace at which they're processing, not at the pace at which you think they should process. Mm -hmm. And that will help them get through it a lot easier and a lot healthier than if they are getting pushed from every side, from the world and from everyone else who thinks they should be doing it a certain way. We all know what it's like to be told, I should be doing something differently than I am. That's a heavy weight to carry. If it comes from the person that they love and trust the most, that just adds more baggage. It doesn't help them release it faster. So I'm not a doctor telling you, I'm not a psychologist telling you that you should do it this way. I'm not adding another should. I'm simply offering advice in a realm where I've seen it happen so often. Yeah. Hi, I'm Amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are, it helps us more than we can possibly say. Especially when it comes to like, when we go through that, I mean, would, would we want to be pushed and shoved through it or would we want space to be able to? So that's kind of where empathy comes in, right? Right. And, and recognize that, hey, this is important that if this is how I would want, then maybe my partner would too. Yeah. You know, it, it goes it goes both ways. But I feel like there's a, a fine line here, and and you do such a good job. And I really like if if you're willing to really kind of dive into this, in the next one, which is personal boundaries. Yes. And and this is where, uh, you know, everything we've talked about up to this point, in in this regard of holding space and allowing as much time needed. Yes. Also. Boundaries are important. Also. And yes. so, and this is this is where there is that fine line. Um, and so maybe you can kind of dive into that and express why these do go hand in hand so well are in a, are really important to clearly communicate and connect with and understand on an individual level and a partnership level, because this will guide and allow what we are talking about to flow a lot more smoothly. Uh, and so, yeah, if you don't mind. Exactly. So again, and we'll use ourselves as an example, you know, I'll use, because I've used it before when my brother passed, obviously that was a very deep emotional wound for me. He had special needs and I assisted him quite often. And there was a little bit of guilt from my side that I wasn't there at the moment of his passing and I needed more time to process that than I likely would have if I had been there or if there was a little more notice because it was a quick passing. You held a space of empathy for me and allowed me to have as much time as I needed to navigate through the emotions that I was holding. 
However, you also had to hold a boundary that I didn't take time that you needed during critical focus hours in order to process my grief or any of the other. I have a friend again. Hello. <laughs> he just really wants to be on the podcast with us. This is the second time we've had a little friend come in and say hi. Um, but there were times when the emotion would hit me out of nowhere. That's how grief occurs. For anyone who has processed grief, it's not exactly like grief goes, oh, she's free from this time to this time on this day. Yeah. So I will pencil in and we'll, we'll make sure that it processes during that time. No, grief doesn't do that. Grief will just come and wham, there I am. And so we could be sitting there doing our daily work and I would be like, I don't even understand what's happening right now. I just have this feeling. But you had to hold a boundary of, I understand. And I am not rushing you through what you're feeling. But I have to focus on this. You process. I'm placing no pressure on you to continue working right now. You do what you need to do. But if we're going to meet the deadline we have, I have to focus on this. That accomplished both things. I had room to process. I didn't feel pressured by you to not process what I was feeling in order to continue what we were doing. But you held the clear boundary of, I can't stop what I'm doing in order to pivot. It's, thank you for sharing that and for seeing that way. And the reason why this works for us is because we clearly communicate our boundaries and we know that going in. And so it's so, it's so critical because when things happen, like they're going to happen, things in life are going to happen and, and they're going to come out of nowhere. And oftentimes we're not going to even know how to deal with it. And so having a partner that is there to support and, and, and help us and have empathy and, and show us that type of love is so important. Um, but, but the goal on either side, you know, if something happens to me, my goal is never to bring you down with that process or, um, or push your boundaries where you're no longer able to be the very best version of yourself. Because honestly, when I'm in those moments, I need the very best version of you. And so if I'm tearing your boundaries down and not allowing you to be the fullest extent, then I'm the one who, not, we both, I don't want to come out that way. Um, we both, like, uh, like I, I suffer through it, you suffer through it, and then we both suffer through it, right? right. And so neither of us are, are, are benefiting from that process. And so that's why it's important to have boundaries because we're not saying like hey in any blanket situation when your partner's going through something that they can treat you poorly or tear you down or do, no that's not part of this this is not roll over this is be there have empathy understand where they are love them but also hold the boundaries that you both have shared and if there are new ones because sometimes things are going to come up this is the first time that this came up in our relationship and right. and so you know, during the time we actually set kind of new, we set new boundaries and we shared where we were at and we had to hold that space. And so you held empathy for me, recognizing like, Hey, like if this were, if that hadn't happened, this is where we would be. And we do need to have these things accomplished, but that doesn't negate your feelings in any way. Like you should be allowed to have those feelings and flow through. And so, yeah, it did allow a, a symbiosis of that experience uh, where we both felt fulfilled, loved, cared for, seen, heard, gotten, all, the, all that stuff, right? And then allowed us to move through it. Um, and what happens is I feel that it's this snowball effect over time is that these boundaries aren't shared, then empathy starts to wane, and then trust starts to get broken because we're not being honest about the situation, we're not being consistent, and so what happens is, is people, couples start to tear each other down. 
the communication becomes all about, you know, gotcha, or, you know, let me tear you down, or, or you know, let me build myself up by putting you down. How could and, you not know yeah. I'm grieving about my brother? Why would you not stop? Yeah. yeah. Like this, you should just expect that I'm in this place. Yeah, e exactly. Expectation of where we're at instead of actually mm -hmm. taking the time to communicate. And so that's why we want to bring this forward and talk about like building trust is so important, but maintaining the trust is just as important. And, and it's, it's why after 10 years, we don't fall into these traps of tearing each other down and disrespecting each other and then expecting us to just know what the other is talking like we're some kind of mind reader. Like, no, these aren't, this isn't, that's not real. And, and you shouldn't, I shouldn't expect you to know always where I'm at just because, just because we live together, we work together, we're best friends, we do everything together. That doesn't mean you just know everything about me all the time. Like, I don't even know everything about me. Exactly. Like I still have so much, I have my whole life to learn about me. So I can't expect you to just know everything about me. Yeah. That's unfair. And that's not loving. That is not empathetic. That is not consistent. That is not honest. And it goes back to like when I had the grief moment, I didn't even know why I was triggered in that moment to have the grief moment. So if I don't know why it was happening, how could I expect that you would know I would have a grief moment and then stop everything to help me through that grief moment? Mm -hmm. It's so important for me to be able to communicate and then honor your boundary while you're being empathetic to me mm -hmm. and say, I understand where you are, but I need to continue where I'm at. So both things could happen and then communicate all throughout the process too. Mm -hmm. So while you were doing what you needed to do, I could navigate my way through the grief, seek to understand where it came from, why I was feeling what I was feeling, how I could continue forward and not let it just continue to build and build and build and dominate my inner world. And then communicate to you if I did need something from you yeah. in order to move forward. Absolutely. And it's when we are going through these difficult times like this, and this could be in so many different ways, the fact that in, in this situation that you were able to hold the boundaries that we have set together and respect them, like even in your grief, even everything you were flowing through, you still were showing love to me. That built so much trust. And so once we did get through it, you know, we were stronger and, and I'm sure there's still going to be moments of grief through the rest of your life. I mean, this is, this is your brother, right? I mean, this is someone that was a part of your life from the moment you were born, right? Up in, and so in, in, in many ways still remains just in a, in a different way, right? Um, but there still should always be space for grief. And, and so, and whether it's grief or anything, there should just be space. And so that's kind of like what, what I love about this, this process is like through this, among all the, any others that we have gone through, you take the time to still honor and respect that. It's not like, oh, I'm in grief, so screw those boundaries. You know, I'm just going to be disrespectful and, and I'm going to get away with it because you love me. Yeah. And that's what I feel like. Uh, it's just one last part of this that I want to touch on is that sometimes we kind of get into that mode with the people we love the most because they love us and we it just and that hurts you know that's such a that hurts my heart when i see people whether they've been clients or friends and family um you know it's hard to to see people just tear each other down when there's like your partners you know love each other be there for each other you know set these clear boundaries don't don't let these things tear you down you know build build yourself up build each other up and when we need time to be vulnerable like that's to know that we have that safe space that loving space that unconditional space to be our most vulnerable like that what a, what other way can we build the most trust yeah. in someone else and to me, that flows so much into the last one, which mm -hmm. is we're not going to be perfect all of the time. Mm -hmm. We are going to have our moments 
where maybe we didn't respect each other's boundaries. We overstepped. We didn't consider the other's feelings. We didn't hold empathy. We did break trust. If we're truly committed to the relationship, there has to be a component of forgiveness and a moment of recovering from that misstep. As we stated in another podcast, we're not an action. We're not a single choice. If we love the person, then we have to forgive an action or a choice. If it continues to happen long over a period of time, that's a different, whole different story. Mm -hmm. That's worth diving into and exploring. But if the person that you care about made a choice or had an action that had a negative impact on you, then forgiveness is key. Mm -hmm. Being willing to move through that together, to express the impact it had on you, to request a new boundary be set there, which is potentially what really needed to occur, then move through that together. Create that boundary. Clearly communicate how you're feeling, then forgive and move on. So, so well said, my love. And that's for reference, like when, when we were going through that together and, and all that, like as your partner, there were aspects of this where I hadn't, I had never had to show up at this capacity as a partner. And so I didn't. It wasn't seamless. It wasn't perfect. You know, there were moments where I misstepped. But to your point, because going into this and we maintain this and we have consistency, we're honest with each other and we have empathy with each other, there was a space where I could share like, hey, there are some levels here that I don't know how to be, you know, I don't know what you need in these moments. Walk me through, help me out. and. And, or it was like, Hey, this is a boundary. And, and I feel like we need to reassess it or adjust it for this type of situation because we haven't experienced this before. And so the main, what I'm, what I'm attempting to get at here is that we could flow through it at a greater capacity because we already knew the intention behind it. And we had clearly communicated that to each other. And so we could flow through forgiveness knowing that we are just one choice. Like that wasn't, that wasn't who we are. Um, and that, that the reason why is because that builds trust. Like you weren't just cause I didn't, you know, I wasn't there in the exact way you needed in that moment. You weren't holding it against me. Right. And like you those times when I was processing grief, and what I needed was to be held mm -hmm. and comforted. And you had never been with someone who lost someone so close to them. Mm -hmm. And yes, my beliefs are very clear on this matter. But having a belief and holding that belief and living in that belief doesn't mean I didn't miss my brother. Mm -hmm. And that I wasn't processing certain emotions around that. So when I would hit that moment and you weren't in the middle of something and holding that boundary, you still didn't know, like, what do I do? I don't know what to do. <laughs> and I didn't quite comprehend that because I didn't know you hadn't been through something like this. So we had a little bit of conflict every now and then around, can you just hold me as I process this grief? Can you be there for me to lean into and create that safety? Mm -hmm. And it, didn't, it wasn't as though you didn't desire to do that. You just didn't know if I needed space or if I needed held. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a balance. And to some degree, sometimes you didn't even know. Right. And so it's a, it's a, and that's where communication, being clear, um, is so important. And it, sometimes we can only approach things from the way that we understand or would understand, right? It's like in this situation, even though I've not had that personally or been with someone who has, 
like all I can go is based on myself. Like for me, you know, I might kind of retreat and need my own space. So the most loving thing that you, Amber, could do in that moment is actually hold space for me and by giving me a little bit of room, if you will. And so, you know, sometimes I would kind of default to that, right? And so there was this opportunity to kind of dive into understanding, you know, what what do you need? And then if if I didn't meet that or maintain that, you know, like you said, we you didn't hold it against me. You just shared where I was at. And like if I it wasn't immediately it was okay, yeah, like no, like no problem. Like I, this is what I need. You know, okay, I'm sorry I didn't recognize that. That's okay. Just help me where I'm at right now, now that it's been communicated. And so it it helps build trust. Like it doesn't make me feel like I'm less than or not a good partner because I couldn't meet ev- meet you every step of the way. Like we were guiding each other through that process and we were allowing each other f- space for forgiveness and recovery in that because, you know, neither of us was perfect in the process mm-hmm. and we're not meant to be, we're not supposed to be, we're supposed to learn and grow from it. And that we did very, very well. And, and so we continue to express that and and hold space and and not hold grudges and not hold each other to certain standards and we we'll, we take time to forgive each other and let each other know that uh, and so you know obviously if if something keeps occurring that's just it's just a different topic like and that's something we can dive into if you all want us to actually build create a podcast on that and and express that differentiation you know comment below but the reality is is like in this situation we just we need it's forgiving and moving forward is such a it, it wasn't like oh i'm going to forgive it by um you know putting it under the rug or something like that right it was like a true sincere honest forgiveness i see you i see you wanting to help me and 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 so and i see you you know wanting me knowing that you see me wanting to help you yeah. like that's that's a beautiful thing so it's just okay then let's let's keep molding this so so we are there for each other and we're not tearing each other down and especially in a space that's it's highly um sensitive yes and that's a key aspect of this too when emotions get heightened especially those that are more sensitive like anger sadness, grief, guilt, and it's met with anger, sadness, grief, guilt, then we tend to just create this bomb that explodes instead of, this dude really wants his five minutes of fame. (laughs) (laughs) Um, For anyone who's listening and not watching, we have a very persistent little bug friend (laughs) who is just getting all up in here. Um, But that bomb then can truly explode a relationship where if instead we take our power pause, right? That tool that to me is so vital and we respectively infuse empathy, take that time to trust that the other person truly has our best interest at heart or we wouldn't be in whatever type of relationship we're in. And instead of blowing up our relationship, we take the time to connect and say, I understand that we're both feeling a lot of emotions right now. So how can we leverage a moment to even step away to calm these emotions before we re-engage from a place of connectedness and understand that what we're working toward is forgiveness of whatever we may have just said, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is a key part of it, that we likely did not mean, and then navigate toward what we truly desire, which is to support one another, right? Because it's so easy to let the emotions become a bomb Mm -hmm. instead of allowing the true nature of your relationship to take you forward. I did it all the time in previous relationships. I'm not going to lie, but that taught me what not to do. Right. 
Yeah. And that's a gift, you know, is, is understanding what not to do can help us better understand what to do. And when you have five pillars like this, well, what is the point of a pillar? It's meant to lift up, right? And hold steady. And so that's what these, these five pillars of building trust are really meant to lift, create, lift up, and maintain trust. And so one of the best things that I feel like people can do is whether it's these five or if these five inspire others or more or you know less, just in, in a partnership, you know, create, clearly communicate this. And this is something we, we revisit constantly. Um, we, you know, we even have a document on both of our desktops. These are my boundaries. This is where we're at. You know, at the beginning of every year, we, we reassess them. And throughout the year, we kind of discuss, not kind of, we do discuss them. And when situations come forward, we say, hey, I know we, this is a boundary. Um, you know, am I holding this? Is there a need to be an adjustment? You know, how can, how can we shift this to best serve each other in this moment? Mm -hmm. And so that's, that, that, that consistency of holding these is so important, that transparency and honesty of talking through them and then and having the empathy to express them and, and understand them. And then that forgiveness and, and allowing that space of recovery. That's why these, these five fit so beautifully together. And so that's why we wanted to share them with you all. And, and if you have more, and, and there are certain parts of an aspect of your relationships, whether it's in a romantic relationship, um, you know, a, a parent, child, sibling, sibling uh, family, friendship, business. I mean, we have all types of different relationships in our lives. So if there are certain aspects that you feel really help, that is like a core pillar for you, you know, please comment below, share, help us learn, help us grow, help us build our list. I mean, that's, that's, that we, we love that. Yeah, we do. And if you're looking at how to create your own personal boundaries or guiding principles, it's actually in the upcoming book, Silent Your Inner Critic. You can get a course that will help you navigate through it, actually. If you go to silenceyourinnercritic.com, we have a mirror technique which helps you see yourself differently that you'll get for free when you hop on our wait list. But we also have some information out there about about building out your personal boundaries and guiding principles and other cool free resources that you can look at. But there's a whole segment in the book that is around building your personal boundaries and your guiding principles because it's a superpower. It really is a superpower. And we want to make sure that you have that. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next week.